happy Monday, everyone. I'm like in my head trying to think of a different way to say hello, but I can't. Um, happy Monday. I'm excited to make art today as always. Um, today we will be joined by Christina and she's going to teach us some cool drawing prompts as well as what she does with all of her sticky note um, challenges at the end of her project. So I'm super psyched about it. We need just some basic supplies, which she'll tell us about in just a second. But a friendly reminder for y'all, um, this is your time to be creative, your designated weekly time to just make and kind of cultivate that creative spirit inside yourselves as an art educator or a creative um, joining us weekly. So I'm going to get Christina in here and then we're going to get busting away right away. Hey, sketchbooks are a little tiny posted today. So be prepared, Christina. Yay! Hello, friend. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. We're so psyched to do this. I'm like, I've been waiting for more prompt ideas, and I'm like, Christina's gonna deliver. <laughs> we got <something> today. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, well, I see you're in your classroom, right? I, I am. I ended up having good Wi-Fi, so I what stayed here show? versus running home real quick. So, yeah, we're gonna nice. go. <laughs> I'm so impressed. Um, can you go ahead and just introduce yourself quickly, um, where you teach? Just a little, a little intro to Christina okay. before we get started. Hi everyone, um, I'm Christina Brown. I'm an art teacher, a high school art teacher based out of the DFW, which is North Texas. Um, we just had a good nine days off from all the ice, so this is our first yeah. day back. Um, I've been teaching for eight years and I mainly teach photography and digital classes, but I do have a handful of art for AP courses as well, which is what I like to do the sticky notes that we'll be talking about here in a little while. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's me. Awesome. So awesome. I love it. It's, I feel like it's kind of cool to do these challenges and do like the creative making because A, it's just a fun time to make things, which is sort of the whole point of it. But that also is a nice little like, it, you know, inspirational snippet into like, yeah. Ooh, oh, I, oh, I think I just want to try this in my class. So it's good. Absolutely. Okay. What do we need today, Christina? Like, okay. What do I need so to have in front of you me? You don't really need a lot. Um, if you don't have sticky notes, you could easily cut up some paper into just small squares. We're working with small and again, sticky note as well, because it feels less scary. Cause mm. with sticky notes, they're pretty um, disposable, right? Yeah. So I like to use them for bell ringers because again, it's less scary for kids to be like, oh, I have to create something on this brand new white piece of paper, right? And so um, sticky notes, if you have them, your favorite drawing pen or mm. pencil, maybe some fun flare pens, whatever you want to do and whatever you prefer to draw with. Um, and then if you have some paper to cut, because we're going to do a little shape challenge later, um, then that would be helpful as well. So some scissors and I think that's all we need, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, we're staying pretty, kind of keeping it pretty simple, <laughs> like not a bunch of complicated supplies and knowing that obviously, as always, every time we do this, y'all can change up what you're using. It doesn't have to match us exactly. But I think the whole point is that we're gonna do some actual sort of quick prompts today. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk bell ringers, I know everybody has different like language for things, but what, are you, what does that look like in your classroom? So the way that I started this whole sticky note thing in general was I had the rainbow set of sticky notes, right? So I had I got lucky with all those colors. And so with high school, I actually would put them up on the wall outside my door. And then the prompt would be on the outside of the door. So students got to pick what color they wanted and they saw the prompt right then and there. So then they would come in the class and the first five minutes of class would be drawing whatever prompt was outside. So it was really cool because it kind of touches with SEL. So depending on what colors they're feeling, you know, we don't, we don't know why we're picking certain colors, but that that's what I really enjoyed about having that extra greeting outside the room. Right. And so you're like, Hey, post-it time and then, or sticky note time. And then they would grab the sticky note outside. Yeah. I love it. And it's like, you know, especially for high school when they're not all arriving at the exact <laughs> same time, like elementary level, they all appear at my door mostly at the same time. And it's like, we kind of start together, but there's this nice sort of like, slow balance of regulating the class and getting everybody kind of ready and do you know working at your pace to get that that like initial idea mm -hmm. out a little bit okay so i'm excited i want to make sure we have time for all we had three ideas yep. we were going to do yep so um christina and i are just going to turn our little cameras down here and then she's going to get us started on like what we're going to create today so okay. please join us my friends if you're ready, the first one's fun. Now I'm gonna. We're only gonna do the. Uh, each one's gonna be about five minutes. Okay. okay. So let me switch my camera down. Wait. One second. Oh, I'm I'm getting you like quite the uh, Jason Bourne video style right now. It's very <laughs> dramatic. Uh, uh, 
Um, let's see here. Okay, so again, I'm at school, so my desk is not cute. But Girl, it's cute because you're there and you're <laughs> rocking it. <laughs> okay, so are we ready for our challenge? You should have your sticky note and something to draw with, and then I'm going to put your prompt in the frame, okay? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. All right, your prompt, we have five minutes, is drawing a cow doing a handstand in a skirt. Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, Again, they are very random. They're really silly because it takes the seriousness out of having to draw something. Yes. Um, so I'm like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, um, what? <laughs> right. And then sometimes kids will start. I don't really have a rule. They can look up references, but I try to encourage drawing from imagination because, you know, when we start looking up references, then we're thinking too much about it. Right. It's like, you it's supposed to just kind of be messy and quick and right. not stress out too much. Exactly. We have been doing some um, sketchbook prompts, too, at the beginning of our art class. And I always tell awesome. like, typically we draw right with Sharpie. Uh -huh. So the point is, like, we can't really erase. And we're going to kind of, like, be sort of speedy about it. And that's going to be fine. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's great. Absolutely. That's why with the sticky notes, too, I think that's why I like them so much. Because they're, they're not, they don't feel like they're going to be final. Right. You know? It's a little, it's a little less scary. Right. So tell me, cause this is like a very random prompt. Tell me how you um, <laughs> generate these like random. So the first like prompt that we're doing here is just like random compilation of, you know, yes. three items essentially, yes. right? And so for this, for these random sticky notes, they, they all started with honestly starting with some sort of animal or um, animate object and then you have it personifying a task or doing a task that they wouldn't normally be doing and so those kind of we just kind of do that in our department um but more silly prompts were actually generated through um there's a thing called a uh, procreate mashup where they mm -hmm. generate prompts there it's an animate object an inanimate object and an environment of course if you want to add an environment then it kind of takes more time into the bell ringer right um and then if shameless plug into Art of Ed, they have a wonderful list of, it's a hundred silly drawing prompts that I use um, a lot for actual projects. I, um, I, yes, yes. I know that I'll link to this after the, um, after our chat in the story. So y'all can go ahead and save that resource if you would like, but it's just like weird, goofy um, animals, silly adventures and activities just to kind of like take the stress out a little bit out of drawing and knowing it can be kind of like weird and that's okay and then also depending on oh that went on let's just make that a big <laughs> <project>. <laughs> this is real-time problem solving christina <laughs> oh yeah i was like that should be an udder no no we teach oh that. i forgot about the udders <laughs> what am i i don't know if i can okay i'll figure it Same. out I think I just completely botched this, but I just got to keep going. Um, but yeah, and then so depending on the level that you teach, um, of course, adding the skirt was an advancement, right? And so normally just the animal itself is could be a challenge. And then you have the action, but then you can add more. So another prompt we had um, last week was a manatee. Um, what was it? No, it was a cow rollerblading while juggling. Okay. So again, like you can advance advance the the skills by adding more tasks or actions to the animal nice and i feel like i've seen too like even just in in the elementary classrooms that are around around me they've got like these little popsicle sticks you can like pull up pick an animal pick an action oh that's up, great. you know yeah. or like a random generator so you could kind of create this in your own way if you want to just do silly drawing Absolutely. with your students i mean this is like a great a great prompt and so I feel like five minutes was actually a long time. But um, so what will happen is my kids will, um, they will be done. Once they get done with their prompt, we have um, a, a sticky note wall outside of my classroom and they go stick it in the corresponding color. So it's kind of like everyone gets five minutes, but if you get done quicker, you can kind of go ahead and go hang it up. Nice. Okay. So it like gives you a little bit of, a little bit more time to like chill with your friends if you finish mm -hmm. early. Right, and get ready for whatever it is that we're doing. Um, but, and, and normally with these, I'll change it with the seasons, the prompts. Um, so, for instance, for Halloween, oh, someone said, love how you guys worked opposite top to bottom and bottom to top. Oh, did you? I know, and it's bottom? funny because <laughs> literally I'm seeing, like, I literally, I was trying to challenge myself and draw it upside down. Uh -huh. Wait, oh. <laughs> wait, right? Yeah. So, like, 
it's like really doing a little handstand, but now I'm realizing upper Instagram just looks like I'm drawing it right side up. But y'all, it's yes. harder than I thought. I know we really did do it opposite. That's hilarious. <laughs> I love that. Um, uh, what was, uh, I forgot what I was saying. We were um, talking about the prompt and the, no, what were we talking about? I don't I lost it's, it. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. We were, were just, we were enjoying the drawing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. So kids have a little extra time at the end if they are able to finish their drawing prompt a little bit faster, right? Yeah. And some kids, you can tell, I think, again, I always speak to SEL, but it's a really great weather check at the very beginning of the class without even asking them anything because you'll already know what skill set your kids have. And so if one kid barely does anything, you can already gauge, oh, they're not feeling creative today or maybe something's up. So um, I think it's a great way to kind of gauge where they're at by just seeing their drawings and how much fun or a little fun they're having with it. That is a great point. I think having any, any way to just kind of check the weather and mm -hmm. see how we're doing without like needing to address the whole group gives you time to like check in on those, on those kiddos that might need a little help. Okay. That looks so cute. Uh, I love the tail of yours. <laughs> I had to fix it. like the busted a move. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so cute. Okay, so we used the what? I love the, the colors you Thanks. used. I need to use colors. Thank you. I know. I didn't know if I was supposed to only use one color, but oh, I got no. ambitious because they were here, so I I couldn't help myself. <laughs> awesome. So if you do do the um, oh, someone said I bet their sketching improves with this. Absolutely. So I think this actually helps with me because I am a reference artist. I need to see references. I I wish my imagination was more uh, visual, but um forcing yourself to make up what you know of that uh thing or animal i feel like it improves your imagination skills and your visual skills i honestly completely agree i also feel like i don't typically draw just like from the top of my head as, as right. easily or as confidently right and there is something nice about it being so fast mm -hmm. it being on a post-it that you're like who cares? It's not a big deal. Right. And the fact that it's like silly and weird anyways takes that extra pressure off there too. So I think that is a great reminder. And us modeling this too as art educators, like, you know, multiple people in our chat here and you and I, Christina, have both said that we don't typically draw like not from reference. Exactly. So like modeling that for our students, like, yo, I can do it too. And it feels weird and it's fine. <laughs> right. Exactly. And yeah. me like messing up with the udder. Nope. That looks like something yep. else. So let's just change that up. <laughs> and we're going to just let it do what it's going to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, that's the first one is the silly prompt. Give us a, give us another all right, one. So the next one has turned into, again, it can turn into full projects, but this one is called the scribble drawing. And I'm pretty sure this is not a brand new, it's not a brand new idea, but um, I just started doing this with my classes last year. And so what you do technically is you start off with a scribble. But what I've noticed is uh, with the younger kids, sometimes a scribble is too much, the whole scribble. Yeah. And so you can start off with maybe just a very simple line, right? Yeah. Um, but if anybody feels like they want to be advanced today, you start off with a, just a scribble, something like that. Don't think too much about it. Don't try to guess what you're going to do before you do the scribble. Just draw a scribble on the paper. Okay. And sometimes the kids will make me do the scribble for them because they're like, can you do it so I don't, you know, get, um, think about it too much. And so then what you're going to do is look at it and try to make it into something. Um, and so, again, all of us are going to be doing something completely different based off your scribble. And so I'm going to be looking at mine. This helps with, it reminds me of like the cloud game where you look for shapes. Yeah, yeah. I'm really seeing a face here. I know. I've got like a weird little chicken thing happening. And I'm <laughs> going to start, I'm going to use multiple colors, I think, but Absolutely. I'm going to keep my original, my original sketch, like my original doodle, a different color so I can tell how I started. Yeah. And then there's really no rules here. Like if you wanted to erase part of it and then, you know, like refine certain ways, there's the only rule is that it starts off with a scribble. Right. Okay. Um, I also like doing this um, outside. So I, when you were telling me about this idea, like I usually, when it's so nice outside and I'm like, okay, we just need to get out there. I'll grab sidewalk chalk and just do like, okay, here's like a super speedy zigzag with a circle at the yes. end. Here's a, you know, like three lines with a slash or whatever. And something that's kind of like these little, these little prompts, it's not so impossible to think of something, but then having kids or team of kids build off of that too. That's it's exactly this idea, but it's so I think, fun. I think it applies to with our trying to approach growth mindset. This helps kids understand that you can make something out of nothing or a mistake or a scratch, yeah. you know? Yeah. So 
And, and again, just like we were discussing before, all of that does need to be modeled in practice too, because we, we can't cultivate that, that like understanding of our own selves and our ability to, to fail until we've tried it and said, oh yeah, that's okay. Absolutely. I'm, it's not a big deal. <laughs> Absolutely. And for any of my digital teachers out there, I've done this with my uh, graphic design kids and procreate, they're able to work digitally as well. And so um, it's, you can do well, yeah, you can as long as you have something you can write with, that's all you really need. Yeah, that's fun. I, I also am like, kind of loving how the scribble it inevitably sort of ends up being a little bit abstract yeah. too. Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it, it's got this sort of cattywampus craziness to it it's like yeah that's okay <laughs> yeah absolutely because it kind of it allows because I'm not like super stylistic as an artist and so I feel like it allows me to become somewhat stylistic without realizing or trying to be um yeah this is like if you look at this might be how I'm feeling right now you know a little disarray <laughs> yeah oh heck yeah I love the like sh like uh what's it called uh frazzled hair yes. <laughs> coming out of the, the high bun <laughs> There we go. I get it completely. Usually I'll like judge my day based on the frizziness at the end of the day. So like, it's right. fine. Yes. <laughs> like, How many yep. times have I put up my hair? Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep. Like, yep, yep, yep. Okay. This, you know what? I'm not going to lie. Mine's real weird. I don't think it I really like understand it. It looks like a chicken. Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to, but it's like, I don't understand what's happening with the body. And I just, I, I, I'm going to be fine with it. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah and so what I've noticed too is when kids do this some of it will be incomplete some of like only one area will have an area that's refined and again it's as long as you somehow create um, and as someone mentioned here in the chat creativity is practice like you have to practice your creativity consistently um, this is definitely one of those things completely yeah I mean this is and and I think too just like we were we were discussing before modeling like those mistakes and just saying like yeah I don't really love this, but that's okay. Right. It was like a quick drawing and it helped me learn some things and maybe there's parts that I do right. like and exactly. that's just as beneficial as the parts that are. Absolutely. How's yours coming? Do you feel like you're close? I think I'm good. Okay. I'm writing a little speech bubble that says I'm just as confused as you are. You're and then while you're writing, I'll show kind of people in the, in the uh, live that, so for instance, this would be an example of one of our manatee prompts from the sticky notes. And then one of the Ooh, students yeah. was inspired by it and then did a visual journal page with another manatee. So instead of keeping the sticky note on the sticky note wall, they kept it and created something else from the actual bell ringer. So I think that's a really cool example of what it can start with and then what it inspired to be. So, um, yeah. That's awesome. I love it's kind of like mini sketchbooks, essentially, too, because you're just like getting a bunch of ideas out and not having to think of the idea yourself necessarily, right. but just like, try this, try this, try this. Absolutely. Um, real quick, uh, a couple things in the chat here. One says, I've done this before, and I make them do the scribble and then pass the paper and the and that ups the challenge. So that's a great idea, too. Oh, that is. That's great. Like Him somebody else um, switching. And then just a friendly reminder for those of you asking about our IG lives, we do go live every Monday at this time at 5 p.m. Central. So we will be making art pretty much every week. All right, yeah, Christina, yeah. We, got, we got two very <laughs> amazing <laughs> sketches. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, same, right? <laughs> I'm like really into your yellow sketch. It's I so like good. her. I'm I'm gonna keep her. I do She's too. Great. Well, of course, I'm gonna keep all these. But right, 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 right. <laughs> so our last challenge we're gonna do today. This one might take a little bit more time. I, if you have the ability to have two contrasting colors, so your background will be a sticky note color, and then if you have whatever you're using for the cut paper, um, this is going to be. I actually got this inspiration from something called Doodle Theory Everywhere. It's a book, um, and what you do is you actually start off with a shape. Mm. And so what I'll do for my kids is actually prepare pre-cut shapes because if they cut the shapes out, they're going to think too much about it. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and so, but it's the same shape that they all get. And then at the end, we kind of compare what everyone did. So what I'm going to do is keep it simple. And again, if you're doing this, then you can tag us in it so we can kind of see what everyone did. But I'm going to do a triangle. So okay. if anyone wants to, um, you know, try to do what we're doing that way we can kind of see compare i'm just going to do a blue sticky note and then a triangle okay okay so simple 
Yes. And then so um, I forgot to say glue stick, but you technically want to keep it somewhere on there. Um, but you're basically going to create a composition from that shape inspiration. Um, I'm going to try not to go easy and just say pizza, but right. <laughs> ice cream. Cone. Right, exactly. So I'm going to glue it on um, somewhere and just kind of go with it. Um, and so the shapes that I've done in the past are like hourglass shapes. You can do blobs. Um, again, depending on the advancement of the kids you have or the, the age level, you can kind of already predict what they might pick based off the shape you do. Okay, right. And, you know, honestly, sometimes like a simpler shape is almost more complicated. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like, I can think of things, but it's like, ooh, what? But like, there's almost too many things. What should I do? Exactly. Right? So the time. <sighs> so again, it's the, it's the challenges giving them a time limit. Okay, um, so we're going to try this one for another, like, five-ish. Yes, five-ish. Okay. Oh, God. Do I want to go with easy or do I want to go, because I'm, like, birthday hat, you know? Like, it looks like a I, party hat. I mean, you could make it complex, that's make it true. a birthday hat, but still have it be, like, real cray. Yeah, that's true. I forgot. I got my flare pen, so I guess I can just start. <laughs> I, like, saw a bird again. I must be, like, trying to redeem my chicken. I don't know. Your chicken was great. I mean, <laughs> it was something, that's for sure. <laughs> so we have a party hat um and so again adding multiple variables with the different types of supplies almost makes it more challenging versus saying here's your pencil you know so right almost then, having like a right like having a little collection of items and just like picking picking what we think is going to work for for the prompt it ended up looking like pizza anyway it's a pizza party <laughs> hat <laughs> You can't help what it was I'm, meant to be. Oh, it's, it is what it is at this point. <laughs> so do they do, do your students do um, sticky note prompts every day that they come to see you? Um, normally, so depending on, again, the curriculum and the way the schedule is, sometimes kids are ready to rock and roll, come in and start painting, you know. So um, I normally like to do it at the beginning and the end of the week at least, um, because that is a lot of sticky notes as well. <laughs> yeah. But um, normally it's at least once or twice a week um it just kind of depends on where we're at in the curriculum do i feel like they need a little pep up in their creativity um yeah so it it kind of depends uh, i oh, right so it, it's really more a little bit like all right what do we what do we need at this exactly. time exactly uh pamela said so each time these are five minute challenges it, it depends for most of my bell ringers they are five minutes period so that way the kids aren't taking up too much time um with something and we can get started right away i do feel like five minutes is a good time because it, it, once they kind of get in the zone it feels like enough time to draw something right. but also is, is over pretty mm -hmm. quickly so that mm -hmm. those kiddos that are kind of like losing steam you know oh, yeah. they you can you can keep them long enough to be like all right you got a minute and a half left exactly and then i like it because it's almost like a mini critique every time when they go put their post-its away they get to see what everyone else did yeah. so um it's it's nice seeing especially with the same prompt we can see what everyone else did it gives you more creative grounds because you're like oh i didn't even think to do that um, right so it's neat seeing that is he going to be happy it's a party or is he going to be sad well you uh, oh it's so cute <laughs> a little <laughs> we have a lot of like emotions in our little characters today yeah. <laughs> oh i love it so far it, it's like a little he's like a guy. little I love him. He's so um, tired. Look at his eye. His <laughs> like <laughs> saggy eyes. His beak is so big. I know, <laughs> but it's like him. <laughs> he's he's got you know he's he's got a little bit of a vibe for sure. Is oh yes yeah, vibes. That is the word, right? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not cool. <laughs> that is vibe, and then vibe and aesthetic. Those are the two words. Okay, good to know. Thank you for teaching me what's cool. I appreciate it. Well, by the time I figure out what's cool, it's gone and it's time for another word. So I, I try, but it's it, it's like it rotates every four years with the high school. <laughs> so all the kids can tell when we're like, just not cool enough oh, yeah. to say the thing from whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm, that's fine. Yep. They're like, miss, that was so four years ago. I'm like, I was still the same age, though. You were right. in elementary <laughs> school. I get why it seems like a long time. <laughs> you have changed. We are still here. I am literally the same person. So, <laughs> so I'm going to okay, do you. Go Sorry, do you usually have the kids sign them, Christina? They can. So 
a lot of them will write the prompt on it. They might just initial it because oh, I guess we have four minutes so I can kind of yep. talk about it. So the, the yay art wall that we have on the outside, um, and there's a post about it on my website if anyone wants to see what it looks like, but it, um, basically we, it's rainbow colored and people can sign their name or write their name kind of depending on how, uh, anonymous they want to be, or if they want people to know. And we have it to where people within the school can take post-its from the wall. Yes. So it's kind of like an active installation and we call it the yay art wall. Cause that's kind of our theme is yay art. Um, and uh, it allows people to have their artwork claimed by somebody and take that, you know, that pride in it. Um, and you'll have people stop by like, look, 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 look at my art, you know, on there and it has their name on it or their initials. Do so. you feel like, do you feel like the art is constantly changing? Like, do the, the students know to like come and grab some or like give them to people and stuff? Do they, do they yeah. utilize it? So luckily my classroom is in a main hallway. And so there's always traffic. And especially when kids are waiting on classes to let out or, you know, they're just kind of chilling in the hallway it's a good um it's a good place for kids to be like oh wait yeah those are halloween themed now oh yeah um we will kind of change it seasonally and then of course people whose artwork is on the walls will obviously bring their friends over and kind of brag to them that they um have artwork up there nice um I love so it. megan says thoughts on doing this k through fifth yeah i think it would what be do you great. think well again it depends on i have a five-year-old so I tried the scribble challenge with my five-year-old. And like I said before, the scribbles were almost too much for her. Yeah. She needed, she, she was like, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me to do. And so <laughs> when I just put a line or an arc, she, she went with it that way. And so I think the sticky notes or even just the bell ringers would work. It would just be tailoring it to the level of your kids, you know? Right. So kind of trying to pick prompts that would be a little bit more attainable, something that would be you know, I'm sorry, I'm so distracted by how cute that little puppy <laughs> dog is. I can't, I can't even, it's too cute. We have um, too yeah. many options. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think picking prompts that would be appropriate for students, and it could even just be something as simple as like, you know, draw, like, draw a cool shape and shade it in, or yeah. like draw, you know, your name cool, or draw like a simple, whatever like it doesn't have to be super complicated no it's just a matter of like really trying to encourage their creativity I think to to not have to think quite so hard right right and that's why I think I like the sticky notes I know that would be another supply or an, sticky notes are it's not something we all just have oodles of but it again is less scary than the blank white sheet of paper mm -hmm. is what I think I love it yes oh my gosh so cute so fun <laughs> and so just to review for us how, um, so for your yay art wall, mm -hmm. like what is, what have you learned from doing that that you feel like is really helpful so that you can continue it to the best of your ability? Um, well, the yay art wall, again, it helps bring community together within the school and people outside of the art uh, department. Um, it also gives me, um, what is the word, responsibility and a reminder to continue to keep doing them. Because <laughs> you know how we start certain things in our classes and then they'll fall off. Right? Yes. Um, so I think that is, is really important too. And then um, to keep, it makes me want to keep doing it because it does spread joy in the hallway. It's rainbow colored. They're goofy little manatees eating sandwiches, you know, <laughs> seeing people laugh at it or be excited to see it does help me keep going. So if you're one of those affirmation type people, I think that's definitely um, a thing that helps. And then also, uh, so someone said, what if your school is a little rough? That's a good point. Um, I think you'd have to read the room on like what parts would be good like is there a part that is a little you don't have to put it mine's right next to my classroom mm. so i know that i'm literally watching people as they walk sure. by um but that is a good point and so you don't have to necessarily put the sticky notes in a communal space it could be in their sketchbooks it could be maybe a, a fun yay art wall within your classroom um and so uh, obviously the opportunities um depend on your situation of course yeah Perfect. Perfect. Well, if you guys created, if you all created with us today, feel free to post your sticky notes and share with us how cute they are and how you did today. Um, and then feel free to share after the fact if you've made anything along with us or if you've done this within your school. Christina, where can they um, tag you so that they can follow you and share if they've made something today? Yeah, so you can tag me on this Instagram uh, or on Instagram, Christina Brown Art. I also have a website, ChristinaBrownArt.com. And so you could uh, go on there, find the art wall. Their scribble drawings are on there too. So 
any more resources are on there as well. And then, but yeah, tag me on here or find me on Facebook. Perfect. After the, after our chat today, these chats are always saved. So I will be sharing this chat and then I'll also um, share a link in the art event story to Christina's website as far as like the Yay Art Wall so y'all can read a little bit more about it. All right. Awesome. Thank, you Thank you so much, you. Christina. This was super fun. Yes. We will see you all next um, Monday, okay? Okay, okay. bye. Bye.